We are going to go ahead and start, and we're going to start with our blanket. Um, we're going to do a lot of blanket rolls to start because it just feels like it would be nice. We're going to do that. They're good blanket rolls before you can do that grimness. <laughs> not if we're not doing any blanket rolls on the stomach today. Not one single blanket roll on the stomach. So we're good. Um, so you'll start with your blanket roll like so. And then we are going to take the fringe side and then neatly and compactly roll it towards the finish side. And you want to really make sure it is really dense because that'll help us a little bit later. Fantastic. And then once you have your blanket roll all set up, you're going to just put both blocks towards the upper outer corners of your space. And then you'll put your blanket roll, I don't know, about two thirds towards the top of your mat. Yeah, I don't really know what two thirds is either. A quarter, two thirds, that's as long as there's enough space for your head to be towards the top of your mat. And then you are gonna turn around, you're gonna give yourself a hug and I want you to find the lowest parts of your shoulder blades. So your shoulder blades are shaped like little Doritos. You're gonna hold on to your blanket roll and lower yourself down onto the floor and you wanna have just the bottom triangle tip of your shoulder blades touching the blanket so it feels like your chest is up. And then you might need to, depending upon how your body is, plant your feet on the floor and then shift yourself just a little bit that way. So it just feels like your chest is being thrust upwards. Fantastic. And then you can put your arms wherever you want. It might feel nice to have them cactus. It might feel nice to have them in a T shape. You might then notice how you wish to move your legs. Do you want your legs long? Do you want your knees bent? If the legs are bent, notice if it feels better to have the feet and thighs parallel or walk the feet outside of the hips and let the knees knock in. Hi, Laura. Um, and you're just going to take a few moments to breathe here. So, Laura, we are starting with your blanket rolled up in a little burrito roll. And then we're going to lay over it where your body is perpendicular. Your spine is perpendicular to the blanket roll. Fantastic. And so as you guys are just here with yourselves for a little bit, I want you to just pay attention to what you're noticing. How is the body breathing? How can the body soften around the sensations of the blanket? So this week I was in my acting class and one of the general themes that we're often told is to listen and respond. You know, you spend time memorizing your lines, you spend time memorizing what your character likes and doesn't like, what the given circumstances are. But in order to actually do anything, you have to listen and respond. And I found myself wondering what would happen if we took that concept, good morning, Robin, of listening and responding, and we took it to other aspects of our lives. So Robin, we're starting with a blanket roll underneath our shoulder blades, and we're just lying down on our backs. And so we're gonna take that practice into our physical practice. Every asana I give you, I want you to first take a moment to land in it and listen to how the body responds. Listen to how your breath changes. Listen to how the mind changes when you're in that shape. And then from there, you might make an adjustment. You might respond to some of those sensations or thoughts or breaths, or you might not. But whatever you choose to do, allow yourself to investigate the possibility that this is helping you to listen and respond in other aspects of our lives where we do want to try to show up as fully, as present, as able as we are able. All right, so you've got two more breath cycles here on your own before I decide to start shaping your breath. And I want you to just notice what you notice. At the end of this next exhalation, I want you to inhale and just breathe into the collarbones and the upper rib cage and just notice what that feels like. 
And then as you're ready, I want you to breathe into your ribs underneath you. So you're pressing into that blanket roll and notice what that feels like. And then on your next inhale, draw your awareness down and see if you can breathe into the low back and the low belly. And you just notice what that feels like. And now we're going to take three breaths. So I want you to breathe into your belly, into the back of your ribs, and then into your collarbones. And then exhale from the collarbones, through the ribs, through the belly. And you'll do that two more times on your own. So belly, back ribs, collarbones. And then soften from the chest, the ribs, and the belly. And you'll do one more just like that on your own. And you're just listening to what the body is letting you know and responding as you are choosing to. Fantastic. From here, let's go ahead and reach our arms up towards the sky like happy little zombies. I want you to reach up through your arms so much that you can feel your shoulder blades wide on your, widen on your back. And then I want you to drop the arms straight down and you're just noticing what that feels like. And you'll do that two more times. Inhale, reach up, shoulder blades widen. And then exhale, draw down. Yeah, I'm sorry, ladies, I am cold. And then on your next in-breath, you're going to reach up through the arms and then reach your arms up and over your head and maybe it'll touch the floor behind you. From here, check in with your feet. How do they feel? Do you want to bring your legs more to a neutral position? Do you want your legs long? Or do you want to keep your legs bent? And you're just going to reach up through your arms. You're going to press down to the back of your spine, breathing into that blanket. And then as you're ready, let's go ahead and reach up through our right arm. Reach our right arm over towards the left. Okay, that's clear as mud. So right arm goes over in a side bend to your left. Grab your right wrist with your left hand. And you're just going to stretch out through the upper rib cage on the right. And you're pulling your right arm over to the left. And you're just breathing there. And you're noticing what that feels like. So Steve, let the arm still be over your head towards the floor. There we go. And then you'll inhale and come back through center and then you'll go to the other side. So the arms sweep up and over towards the right. You hold your left wrist with your right hand and you're just finding a nice stretch on the upper part of your armpits on that left side. Fantastic. Next in breath, let's go ahead and come back to center. Bring both hands to the back of your head, interlace your fingertips at the back of the skull, and I want you to just tuck your chin to your chest and lift your elbows up towards the sky, rounding your upper back. And you can take a few breaths to move around here, really pushing your upper back into that blanket. And so for you, you might move around right to left, you might move around up and down, but you're just moving the upper spine, pressing it into that blanket and noticing what that feels like for you. Fantastic. And again, you're listening and you're responding. So you go to a shape, you pause there, you breathe, you notice what the body tells you, and then choose if you want to respond to that sensation. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and lower our heads back down. Extend just your left arm alongside your ear. And then you are going to roll over onto your left side. Awesome. So with your left arm reaching forward and away from you, your right arm can come in front of you. And I want you to just push down into the blanket roll and you're gonna roll a little bit more towards your chest. And then you're gonna roll a little bit back and you're just gonna do this as many times as you want. But there are fun little muscles here. Some of them might be in our chest region. Some of them might be underneath. You might get your serratus and your lats, depending upon how far forward or how far back you go. And you're just going to find a spot that feels kind of fun for you. And you're going to stop there and you're going to breathe. And you're just going to stop and you're going to breathe. And you're going to stop and you're going to breathe. And you're just going to notice. Fantastic. And then as you're ready, you'll gently roll all the way back onto your back. Take a moment to be still in neutral. Great. And then we will go to the other side. So now you're going to roll over onto your right side. The right arm is still straight up towards the top of your mat. Your left arm might come in front of you just as a kickstand. And then maybe you'll roll a little bit more towards your chest. Maybe you'll roll a little bit more towards your back. But you're just finding all these fun little muscles. Yeah. 
more around our shoulders and you pause and you breathe and we're listening and responding. You know, it's like one of those fun things, like actors spend a lot of time learning all their lines, but we don't really like the actors that you can tell they've memorized and they're just spitting out words they know. We like the ones that make it seem like they're living truthfully under the imaginary circumstances, just like we wish to do in our own lives. You know, just pause once you've found a fun, good spot for you. Fantastic people. Yeah. And then as we're ready, we'll... Inhale and roll back onto our backs. She'll just take a moment to pause. Yep. Make sure your bum is underneath your shoulders. Go ahead and bend both your knees if your legs are straight. Put your feet on the floor. And then you're going to lift your spine up enough to slide the blanket down towards your low back. Or maybe you'll slide your torso forward. You choose how you want to do that. But you're going to slide that blanket roll so it's underneath your low back. And by underneath our low back, we really want it underneath our low back. So um, a little higher up than you would normally think. Yep. So it's in that lumbar region. Yeah. And you just take a few moments to pause and breathe there. Now your spine is in a different back bend. And you just notice what that feels like. What, what? Yeah, right. I really like that there. It just feels very nice and supportive. And so... You'll just take two more breath cycles here and you just notice what this feels like. The blanket might be just providing a little bit of support to your natural lumbar curve and that might feel super awesome to you. And it might not and that's okay too. Awesome. From here, let's go ahead and draw our right knee into our chest. Interlace your hands either at the back of the thigh or the front of the knee and you just notice what this feels like. So suddenly the pelvis is maybe changed just on the right side. Some of you will extend the left leg long on the floor beneath you. And if you've done that, you'll flex through the left foot. And you'll notice that here, your spine is being arched like you're sticking your butt back like dear life into the floor. And you want to find that. So this is how when you stand up, your lumbar curve for most of us should still be there. And you just pause and you breathe. And if you don't like this shape, that's okay. You're just listening. And then you respond. Do you need to make an adjustment so it feels better to you? Fantastic. Awesome. As you're ready, go ahead and gently bend that left knee if it's straight. Put the foot back on the floor. Release your right thigh and put your right foot next to the left and just take a moment to notice, to breathe, to see how the body's feeling. And then we'll try all that on the other side. So left knee comes in. Hold on to the left shin or back of thigh. And then some of you may choose to extend your right leg long on the floor beneath you. And if you've done that, you know, you're still active through that right leg. You're pushing down both halves of your sacrum into the floor. Yeah. And then you're just pausing and you're breathing. Fantastic. And you just got two more breath cycles here and you're just listening. How, what is the body telling you? How is the breath changing? What thoughts are coming up as you're here? Fantastic. As you're ready, if that right leg went straight, bend the right knee, plant the foot on the floor, and then release the left leg and put it on the floor. Fantastic. Now you just pause and you just notice what you notice here. As best as you can, you're just gonna put a little bit more pressure into your feet, lift your hips, and then move your blanket roll out from underneath you to the right or to the left. Yep. And then, I got it. You'll just put your butt back down on the floor. Make sure your shoulders are, and hips are in one line. And I want you to take a few little pelvic nutations. So you'll just arch the low back and round the low back. And just notice what that feels like. Fantastic. Great. Great. And then you'll just come to a still neutral spot. From here, extend your hands alongside your hips. Fantastic. Press down evenly into your feet, inner and outer edge. And then make sure your feet are hip distance apart. From here, inhale, sweep your arms up and over your head. Keep your hands there and just press the backs of the hands into the floor. Reach out through your fingers, reach down through your hips and see if you can arch your spine just a little bit. Fantastic. Take a big breath in. Take a big breath out. 
Next in breath, push through the feet, roll up the spine, come up into a bridge pose, keeping your hands there. Fantastic. And then when you're ready, you're going to slowly lower down bone by bone by bone by bone. Yep. And you'll do that four more times on your own. So you'll inhale and roll up the spine. Yep. And then you'll exhale and roll down the spine. And as you do this, I want you to notice how the weight is on your feet. Are you pushing down equally through the big toe mound and the pinky toe mounds as you lift up? Are you pressing evenly through the right foot and the left foot? Are you allowing yourself to slow down and really experience every sequential movement of your spine? Fantastic. All right, the next time you lift your hips up, you're gonna go ahead and stay there. Some of you will keep your arms over your head if that feels good to you. Some of you will sweep your arms through the midline and come back down alongside your feet. From there, you might walk your shoulder blades underneath you and either tuck or rather grab opposite hand to grab the outer edges of your mat or none of the above. But you've got about five breath cycles here and you're listening and you're responding. What is the body telling you? What is the breath telling you? And how do you choose to listen and honor that wisdom, that knowledge, that gift? Nice work, guys. Two more breath cycles on your own, and you're just noticing what you notice. At the end of your next exhalation, gently release your hands if they are tucked. Untuck the shoulders and bring your hips back down. If the arms are overhead, bring the pelvis down, and then draw the hands back alongside your hips. And you'll just take a moment to pause here. You'll take a moment to breathe, and you just notice and you observe. Right. All right, let's go ahead and move on. Draw your knees into your chest. Give yourself a little hug and notice what it feels like to have the back of the low back rounded into the floor. Yeah. Then after you've done your fidgeting, you'll go ahead and come to stillness. Bring your hands onto the tops of your thighs. Bring your thighs perpendicular to the floor, shin bones parallel to the floor. Actively flex through your feet. And we're going to imagine we're little Barbie dolls. So Barbie point through your feet. Draw your feet close to each other. Push your hands into your thighs, your thighs into your hands, and we're going to breathe here for three. You're going to kick into your hands for two. You're going to push your hands into your thighs for one. Fantastic. Gently release your arms out to the side into a T-shape. Keep your legs as active as they are. And then you're going to take a big breath in. Keep your right shoulder pinned to the floor and then exhale, lower your legs towards the right. So left shoulder stays pinned into the floor. You lower your legs to the right. And then you'll take a few breath cycles there, keeping your Barbie pointed feet. And then on your next inhalation, you'll come back up to center. We're gonna do that again. So keep the left shoulder pinned. Allow the legs to fall over to the right. So they can only go as far to the right as you can keep that left shoulder pinned. And then this time I want you to push your bottom leg into your top leg. Yep, root down more through your left shoulder and then make sure you're still breathing. Fantastic, inhale, come back up. We'll do that again. This time exhale over to the right. Push the bottom leg into the top leg. Keep the left shoulder rooted. And you breathe for three, you breathe for two, you breathe for one. Inhale, come back up to center. And this is our last one. Next time, go oh, exhale, go over to the right. This time, allow the legs to completely come to the floor. From here, you might take a booty bump back so your hips will slide to the left. Yep. And then you can bring your right hand to the top of your left thigh. Once you're holding on there, I want you to send your top thigh over towards the bottom knee. So it's going to have to slide directly to the right. It's going to feel weird, but you're going to slide it to the right. Then pull down yep, with your right hand. Push up with your left thigh. You might push down into the back of your head, lift your right shoulder and slide it to the right. And then you're going to find this 
fun, crazy stretch is you push your top leg into your arm and you slide it over towards your right and root down through your left shoulder. And we should find this long stretch going across the back and you're just gonna breathe and respond. You listen and you respond. Fantastic, okay. And then as you're ready, you'll gently release that. You'll inhale, come back up through center. Take a moment to pause in stillness, both legs parallel-ish to the floor. And let's give a real rest. So go ahead and lower your legs down and just pause and just notice what you notice. And then we'll try all that on the other side. So go ahead and bend your knees, plant your feet firmly on the floor if they're not. Take a little pelvic nutation here if you'd like, just noticing how that arching and rounding of the low back feels. And then you'll find yourself in neutral. Draw your shins parallel to the floor, thighs perpendicular to the floor. Bring your hands to the tops of your thighs. Barbie, point your feet and press for three. Kick for two, press for one. Fantastic. Arms open out into the T-shape. Keep your feet active. Keep your right shoulder rooted. And then exhale, lower the legs towards the left. And you'll just stay in this first one for about a breath cycle or two. And then you'll inhale and come back up. And then we'll do that again. So exhale back to the left. Keep the right shoulder rooted. This time push the bottom leg into the top leg. Yeah. And then inhale, come back up. And then we'll go over one more time in just a little holding position. So the legs will go over to the left. Keep rooting down into the right. And then notice if you can draw your knees a little bit closer to your face, just a smidge. There we go. Bottom leg into top leg. Fantastic for three, four, two, four, one. Inhale, come back up. And then fourth and final time. So the legs will now go back to the left. You'll allow them to completely come to the floor. And then take a booty bump, sending your pelvis back towards the right just a little bit. From here, bring the left hand to the top of your right thigh. Now your top leg, so that's your right leg. See if you can send it forward in line with the bottom leg. You pull down with your left hand as you kick up with your right thigh. And then some of you may push into the back of your head, lift your left shoulder out to the left, and that'll allow your right shoulder to come more towards the floor. And you'll just take a few breaths here. And you're just listening. What is the body telling you? What is the breath telling you? And then how can we choose to respond? It's funny because I think our bodies are always sending us messages. Technically, I feel like there's a scientific fact that Laura or Jenny, you can confirm or deny later, but that there are more messages that go from our heart um, and from that part of the body up to the brain than from the brain down to the body. But yet we don't always listen to the messages that are coming up from the body. We try to always direct messages down. But if we can listen, we can then choose to respond in a way that might be most beneficial to us. So gently release that left hand. You'll inhale and come back through center. And you'll just take a moment to pause. And you'll take a moment to breathe. And you'll just see if you can find center and neutral. And notice what that feels like. Yeah. Fantastic. All right. From here, extend your right arm alongside your ears. Roll over onto your right side. Continue to roll over onto your abdomen. When you find yourself on your belly, extend both of your arms out in a T-shape. From here, you're gonna slide your right arm out to the right, slide your left hand underneath your left shoulder. Today, I want you to start by lifting your left leg up first, and then start to cross the left leg over to the right side of your body. You'll then push into your left hand, maybe the right arm slides a little bit more to the right. You might bend the left knee and plant the left foot on the floor. And you're just gonna really push into that left hand. And notice that that allows your chest to rotate a little bit more up towards the sky. And then you feel fun stuff happening in your right chest armpit region. And you're just breathing. You're listening to the sensations that you're experiencing. You're listening to the breath and how it changes the sensations or changes with the sensations. And then you're responding accordingly. 
Fantastic. On your next in-breath, we'll come back onto our belly. Slide your left arm out to the left, both legs long. Slide your right hand underneath your right shoulder. Start by lifting the right leg first, pushing down to the right hand, rolling towards the left. The left arm might slide out to the left. From there, you might bend your right leg and put the right foot on the floor. Yep, and then you just pause and you breathe and you notice what that feels like. Lightly pushing down into your right hand allows you to roll more of your chest up towards the sky. And you just notice what that feels like and you breathe. Great. On your next in-breath, come back to center. From here, extend, or rather bring both hands alongside your rib cage, thumbs roughly in line with your nipples. Reach back through your legs. From here, I want you to keep looking at your belly button. So you're gonna keep looking at your belly button. Start to push down into your hands in order to lift your chest. Keep looking at your belly button. Once you're somewhat up, I want you to then push down into the hands and push wide isometrically into your pinky fingers. And notice how that starts to change what's happening in your shoulder blades which then changes what's happening in your back. From there, elongate your neck and lift your head so that it feels like you're in your cobra pose. Oh, fantastic, look at that. And then check in with your pelvis, press down into the pubic bone, lengthen back through the tailbone, press down into to the tops of your feet. And the next exhale, lower all the way down, baby cobras, yay! Now you get to do that one more time on your own. And I want you to listen and respond to your own body. So I gave you lots of cues that first time. But how does your, oh, look at that, that looks nice. How does your body tell you you need to be in this shape? Nice job, guys. And then go ahead and lower down and you'll do one more on your own. Fantastic. And you're just listening and responding. Yeah, nice work, fantastic. The end of your next exhale, lower all the way down. From here, you can go ahead and curl your toes under. Keep your hands as they are. Draw your low belly in and push yourself up to a hands and knees position. From there, you might need to walk your hands back just a little bit. And then you're gonna take a cat and a cow shape. And you're gonna take about four to five of those. And I want you to, again, listen and respond. Listen and respond. Yeah. So we're just breathing. So we're just noticing. Fantastic. Great. Now let's go ahead and come to a still neutral spot. Neutralize your spine. Send your right leg back. Tuck the toes under. Send your left leg back. Tuck the toes under. And we're going to stay here for plank for about five to ten breaths. And you're going to listen and you're going to respond. How does the body need to find more stability? Is it pulling up the low belly? Is it lengthening the tailbone back to the feet? Is it lightly engaging your glutes? Is it pressing down through the L shape of the hands? Is it widening through the shoulder blades? Is it just deepening your breath? You're listening and you're responding. Fantastic. As you're ready, you'll exhale and lower your knees to the floor. You'll inhale to a baby cow and then you'll exhale Tuck the toes under, lift the hips up and back, downward facing dog. And when you get to your down dog, I want you to take a moment to pause. And I want you to take a moment to breathe. And from this down dog, go ahead and bend your knees and walk your feet forward about one footprint. Walk your feet forward about one footprint. Fantastic. Bend both your knees a lot. Take your right hand to the outside edge of your left calf, ankle, or thigh. Fantastic. Then when you're ready, push your left hand forward, lift your armpit up, and maybe straighten your left leg long. And feel what that feels like in terms of a little twist and lots of stretch happening. And you just listen and you respond. And it might just be by taking a deeper breath. It might be coming out. It might be modifying. Fantastic. When you're ready, you'll gently release that right hand, come back to center, both knees bent, hips high, and just notice what that feels like. And then when you're ready, you'll try the other side. So left hand to the outside edge of right thigh, calf, or ankle. When you're ready, push down through the right hand, straighten the right leg, and take a little rotation under, and you're just pausing and you're breathing. Yeah, fantastic. Very gently, you'll release. Go ahead and walk your hands forward or your feet back, whichever one you took. So you'll go back to your downward facing dog. 
that was clear as mud. So hands back to the top of your mat, feet to the back of your mat. There we go. And then you just take a moment to pause and see how that feels. Great. And then we're gonna go ahead and add on. On your next in breath, sweep your right leg up and back. As you exhale, draw your right knee to your nose. Pause, plant your right foot between your hands. At this point, you're probably going to lower your back knee down to your blanket or the mat and bring your hands to your blocks. Depends on what works for you. Fantastic. From there, push down into your front foot, push down into back knee, start to bring your spine up to vertical and both hands into the center of your front thigh. And you're just pause and you breathe and you'll see how this feels. And for some of us, we'll just stay here, pushing front foot down, back knee down, sucking those points together. Some of us will sweep our left arm up and overhead and we just want to breathe. We want to feel like a long breath happening on this left side and we'll just listen and we'll just respond. And some of us will shift our pelvis forward just an inch and we'll stay there happy as a clam. Some of us will take a little side bend towards the right. And we're just pausing and we're breathing. We're noticing if we can soften any tension around our right shoulder or our mouth. We're just finding a nice stretch happening all along our left side body. Fantastic. As you're ready, you'll inhale and come back up to center. As you exhale, both hands come down to the floor. Tuck the back toes under, straighten the back leg long. Pause. You're going to lift your butt enough to slide your front foot back to meet your back foot. Plank pose. Fantastic. And we'll pause for three. We'll pause for two. We'll pause for one. As you exhale, lower your knees down to the mat. Inhale into a little baby cow shape. Exhale into a little baby cat shape. Inhale back to your cow. And exhale back. Oh, crap. What a shape are you in now? You're in down dog. We're going to down dog. It's like cat, cow, cat, cow. Which one are we in? Fantastic. And then just take a moment to pause and breathe here. And you just notice. Can you keep lifting up through your inner armpits? Can you press the hands down and forward, the hips up and back? Oh, and then see if you can find that cow shape in your pelvis just a little bit. Yeah, fantastic. And then as we're ready, we'll try the other side. So inhale, sweep your left leg up and back. As you exhale, left knee to nose and just pause there for a brief moment. Gently lower your left foot between your hands. You'll then lower your right knee to your blanket roll or the mat. From there, hands might come to blocks or they might stay on floor, but you're gonna push into front foot, push into back knee, and then start to walk your hands up to the center of that front thigh. Some of us will stay right here, just pushing the front foot, push into back knee, suck those points together. Some of us will reach our right arm up and overhead and we'll just pause here. And you're just finding a stretch from your right armpit to your right hip. Some of us will slide our pelvis forward a little bit and just pause and breathe there, happy as a clam. And then some of us will take a little side bend, but we're listening and responding. Sometimes we throw ourselves into things, into the deep end metaphorically, because we haven't taken the moment or the opportunity to notice what an earlier bus stop, as Christina Sell likes to say, it is where we needed to get off. And then as you're ready, we'll gently come out of this. Go ahead and exhale and lower your hands down to the floor. Tuck the back toes under, straighten the back leg long. Lift your pelvis enough to slide your front foot back to your back foot. And then you'll pause here for three. You'll pause there for two. You'll pause there for one. Exhale, lower your knees. Inhale to a cow shape. Exhale to a cat shape. Inhale once again to cow. And then exhale back to downward facing dog. And just take a moment to pause and breathe. And you just observe. Great. And then we're going to add on. Inhale, come forward into plank. As you exhale, shift your weight forward and lower all way down to your bellies. If you still have a blanket there, you might want to discard that. From here, we're going to keep our hands in line with our rib cage. Go ahead and lift your right leg up, reach the right leg back, put the right foot down. Same thing on the left side, left leg up, reach the left leg down, put the left leg 
or left leg back, put it down. And then you're going to look at your belly button and see if you can lift your chest up by pushing down into your hands. Once your head's a little high, press wide into the pinky fingers, isometrically draw the shoulder blades onto the back. Now this time I want you to see if you can reach back so far through your feet that both legs can float up evenly. And notice how that allows you to lift more of your chest up. Fantastic. See if you can keep your chest that lifted and hover your hands for three. Hover your hands and legs for two. Hover everything for one. Fantastic. We'll roll the way down. Curl the toes under. Come up through modified plank or plank. And then exhale back to downward facing dog. Fantastic. Great. Awesome. And then let's move on. Inhale, sweep your left leg up and back. As you exhale, bend the left knee, open and stack the left hip. Now, some of you may circle that top ankle. Some of you may keep it still, but you're paying attention. You're listening and then you're responding. And then notice if you wanna draw your outer right hip back so that you can find a crazy stretch on the inside edge of your right thigh. Maybe lift the left knee a little higher. Fantastic. Go ahead and come to stillness if you're moving that ankle. On your next exhale, step your right, sorry, left foot between your hands. Pause here. Go ahead and spin your back foot to the floor and then bring both hands to blocks or floor inside your front foot, inside your front foot. So we wanna still push into our front foot a lot like we did before. Push into your back foot a lot like you did before. Now suck those two points together. Now you're gonna to have to draw your outer left hip back just a bit. And then you're gonna walk your hands to the upper right hand corner of your space. Push your hands down and forward, draw your butt back to the lower left hand corner of your mat. And then see if you can scoop your left butt cheek under. Yep, so you're really scooping your left butt cheek under. And as best as you can, you wanna walk back enough so that all the weight stays in your legs and then you walk your hands as far forward as possible. So we get that external rotation in that left leg. Yeah, great. And then are we breathing? Yep, are we breathing? Fantastic. Now listen very closely, walk your hands back so they're underneath your shoulders. At this point, pivot to the ball of your back foot so walk to the top of your mat, pivot to the ball of your back foot, and then bring your hands to your blocks. From here, step your back foot in a little bit, straighten your front leg long and your back leg long. So we're in a modified pyramid pose. And you're gonna pause here. Some of you have both feet completely parallel to each other, which means your back heel may or may not be on the floor. Some of you will then walk your blocks underneath your shoulders on the first or second setting, maybe even the third setting, and then go ahead and lift your spine parallel-ish to the floor. Fantastic. Now, some of you will stay right here. Some of you will peel the sole of your left foot up and away from the floor, hug your outer left hip back, Lift up through your inner right thigh and you're just pausing and you're breathing and you're pausing and you're responding. Are you clenching anywhere in your mouth? Are you clenching in your breath? Are you clenching in your body or can you let something soften? Can you let something release? Fantastic. Next in breath, go ahead and lower the sole of the foot. Bend the front knee. Plant your hands on the mat and then step your front foot back to meet your back foot plank pose. Pause here. And you'll just pause for three, you'll pause for two, you'll pause for one. Exhale, lower the knees, inhale into a cow shape, exhale into a cat shape, inhale back to cow, and then exhale back to downward facing dog. You're just pausing and you're breathing and you're noticing how that feels. And then we'll try all that on the other side. So inhale, sweep your right leg up and back. As you exhale, bend the right knee, open and stack your hip. And then go ahead and maybe you'll be in stillness here. Maybe you'll circle that ankle. So we have to just listen and respond and it's okay. I think sometimes it's hard to listen and respond because we don't always know if we'll be prepared to respond, but you know what we are. Awesome. Draw your outer left hip back and keep pushing into your right hand as much as you're pushing into your left. Yep. 
On your next exhale, draw the right knee to the nose. Carefully plant that foot between your hands. Fantastic. From here, spin your back foot to the floor. Bring both hands to the inside edge of your right foot. Maybe the hands are on blocks or floor. Now push into your front foot a lot, push into your back foot a lot. Then walk your hands to the upper left hand corner of your space. With hands shoulder distance apart, push your butt back and keep all the weight in your legs. So if I told you that you had to take your hands off the floor, there we go. You could easily do that without having a horrible incident. And so we're just going to pause and you're going to breathe. And it feels like you're sucking your right hip underneath. There's really a lot of external rotation. And then you're just pausing and you're breathing. So Laura, walk your hands back just a little bit to send your butt back to the wall behind you. Yeah, keep bending in your right knee. And almost like you're, I don't know, having a Beyonce moment or something. Really stick your butt back and let your hands come forward. There you go, Laura. Yeah. Awesome. And then as we're ready, we'll gently walk our hands back to the top of our space, spin to the ball of our back foot. Hands will come onto our blocks. Step your back foot in a bit. Make sure both legs are about parallel as we come to this modified pyramid pose. And then make sure your blocks are underneath your shoulders, maybe on first, second, or third setting, whatever feels appropriate for you. Lift your spine parallel-ish to the floor. Keep drawing your outer right hip back, and some of you will stay right here. You might also choose to peel the sole of your right foot up off the floor. Lift up through that inner left thigh, and you're just pausing and you're breathing. Where can you soften? Where can you trust a little bit more that the body has lovely information for you? And we've got about three more breath cycles here. Nice job, guys. At the end of your next exhalation, we'll go ahead and inhale, bend the front knee, plant the hands on the mat, step yourself back to a plank pose. Pause here. We'll take three breath cycles here and you just notice what it feels like in your plank. And then at the end of your third exhalation, you'll inhale, shift your weight forward and lower all the way down. Yay, okay. So this time we're gonna add all those things together and see if we can move into a different shape. So hands alongside your rib cage, keep looking at your belly button to lift your chest. Push wide into your pinky fingers to externally rotate and isometrically engage the shoulder blades and then lift your head so that your head is in line with your spine. Now from here, reach so far back through both feet that both legs float up and away from the floor and then see if you can lift your head and chest a little higher. Keep that, lift your hands up, slide your hands back about an inch, and then put your hands back down onto the floor. Push down into your hands, push wide into your pinky fingers, and start to lift yourself to an upward facing dog. So the thighs will come up, the inner thighs are lifted, the tailbone's lengthening back, and we're pausing and we're breathing. Fantastic. As you're ready, you're going to reverse all that, coming all the way back down. Slide your hands forward, tuck your toes under, inhale, come up to a modified plank or plank, and then exhale back to downward facing dog. And we just pause, and we breathe, and we pause, and we breathe. Awesome. And this next one is going to be interesting for those at home, because you're not going to have a blanket fairy to help, but we'll see how this goes. So... Actually, let's all just come to the top of our space. So you'll exhale and bend your knees and walk to the top of our space. So we have our blocks up there. And then I want you to grab your blanket rolls. And we are going to have your blocks and your blanket rolls. And this is what we're going to do. So with your hands on your blocks, I encourage you to turn them to the highest setting. Do whatever the heck works for you. And then you're going to step one foot at a time onto your blanket roll, but you only want the balls of your feet on your blanket roll. And then adjust your blocks so that they can actually support you. Now from there, some of you will be like, yeah, Jessica, I don't need the blocks. And so you might let go of the blocks. But you're going to just let yourself hang forward here and just say, hello, happy hamstrings. Yep. Mm -hmm. So we're stretching our calves and our hamstrings, and you're going to let your head be super duper heavy. So 
some of you will stay here and breathe into that sensation and that will be enough for you. Some of you are gonna bend just your right leg. Just your right leg, just your right leg, just your right leg. And then you notice what happened. Did you stop breathing? Maybe, see if you can come back to that. Awesome, and then you'll go ahead and straighten that right leg and we'll try the left leg, just bending the left leg. And you just pause and you breathe. And you notice what that feels like. Yeah, fantastic. And then we'll go ahead and come back to center, straighten both legs. Now this time you probably might want to use the blocks. It's a nice, helpful thing. So even if you didn't need them before, you might want them in the next one. We'll bend just our right leg again, and then we'll walk our hands and our blocks if we're using them over to the right side of our corner. Oh, yep, uh-huh. And you're just pausing and you're breathing and you're saying, oh my God, legs. And you're just noticing. How can you soften? How can you let go? How can you be present in this moment? Fantastic. And then we'll come back through center and then we'll try that on the other side. So you'll bend just your left leg and walk the hands over to the upper left-hand corner. And you just pause and you breathe. And you notice if you can let your head be super heavy, chin slightly comes into the chest. Yeah, fantastic. And then we'll come back through center. Very gently, hands will come back to your blocks if they're not, and then go ahead and step yourself off your blanket. Now, standing at the top of your space now, maybe you release your hands completely from the blocks and just notice what it feels like to be at Uttanasana now. How do your hamstrings feel? Do you feel like you're a little deeper into the shape than normally you are? And if so, great. If not, great. You just pause and you breathe. And then we're going to try this. Slide your hands up your shin bones and lift your spine parallel-ish to the floor. Now, push your hands into your shins, your shins into your hands. And I want you to find that cow back. Find your cow back. So your belly drops, your shoulder blades drop. Fantastic. Once you've got your cow back, notice how you can draw your chin to your chest just slightly to elongate through your spine. And suddenly we're an amazing long spine. Ha ha. Yay. Okay. And then when you're ready, you're gently going to exhale, fold all the way over your legs, bend your knees, plant your palms, and walk yourself back to your downward facing dog pose. And you just pause and you breathe and you pause and you breathe and you notice what you notice. Nice job, guys. All right. Let's move on. Inhale, sweep your right leg up and back. As you exhale, knee to nose. Carefully plant that right foot on the floor. Spin your left foot down for warrior one. And we're going to see if we can keep it a long warrior one. And then we'll inhale and come up for Virabhadrasana one. Now for today, let's take our right hand out of the equation and draw our right hand to our right hip. Push into your front foot. Push into your back foot. Reach up through your left arm. And then you just notice what this feels like. Some of us will stay right here. We've got a nice stretch going on the left side body. We might stay there. Some of us are going to take a happy little side bend towards the right. If we do that, see if we can soften our right shoulder. See if we can lift up through our inner left thigh. And it feels like there's a spiral going from our left pinky toe up through our left thigh. We're like, oh, yeah, that feels nice. And you just pause and you breathe. Oh, yay. And we'll inhale and come back up through center. So right hand on right hip, push down into right foot to straighten right leg. Pull your right hip back. Now push down into your left foot and then reach up through your left arm. Fantastic. From here, we're going to reach forward, out, and down. Once your spine is parallel-ish to the floor, you might grab that block and slide that block underneath your left shoulder. Fantastic. Oh, block fairy. That's fantastic. I like that. And then some of us take a moment to notice. Do you need to step your back foot in a little bit and why? You notice and you respond and you make sure you've got a firm base for you. Then with the left hand underneath the left shoulder, push down to lift your spine parallel-ish to the floor. Start to scoop the belly on the right side and maybe you'll rotate your rib cage towards the right. Some of us will then see if we can stay here and squeeze our shoulder blades together on our back, which ironically enough means you have to claw the left hand back and then maybe you can rotate a little bit more. Now, this is something I generally don't encourage, but I want you to try this today. What happens if you let your back hip, your left hip, go into the twist with you? So it'll come forward. Yeah. Notice how that allows the rib cage to go more. You okay? 
Okay. And then you just pause and breathe. And if that's too much, it's too much and you come out, but you just notice what you notice. And then some of you might reach your right arm up and some of you might not, but you're holding the shoulder blades together on the back and you're pausing and you're breathing. Yeah. Very gently lower the right hand down to the floor or block. Fantastic. Let's listen very closely here. Bring both hands to your blocks, shift your weight forward, walk your blocks forward, float your left leg parallel-ish to the floor. And you'll just pause here for three, lifting up through that inner thigh for two, hugging your outer right hip back for one. Yay. On your next exhale, bend your supporting leg. So that's the right leg. Slide your left leg back plant your hands on the floor and step back to a plank pose. You have the option to lower down into cat and cow shape or cycling through an up dog and cobra. But you choose what feels best for you by listening and responding and choosing the best thing for you. Yeah. And then we'll make our way back to down dog when we're ready. And you pause for a few breaths. Nice. All right, let's try the other side. Inhale, sweep your left leg up and back. As you exhale, step your left foot quietly between your hands. Great, spin your right foot to the floor for warrior one. And then when you're ready, inhale, come up for Virbhadrasana one. Yay. So when you're now in warrior one, make sure you're pressing down into your left foot, pushing down into your right foot, sucking those points together. And then bring your left hand to your left hip, reach up through your right arm, and you just find this nice stretch happening on your right side body. And some of us will choose to stay right here. Some of us will take a little happy baby side bend, whoa, over towards the left. And then we notice if we can soften any tension around our left shoulder. And sometimes just letting the arm hang works, but you're just letting that go. And you're just pausing and you're breathing, finding and slight engagement in your low back to make sure it stays long. And then we'll go ahead and come back to center. Push down into your left foot to straighten your left leg long. Dial the outer left hip back. Push down into your right foot, reach up through your right arm. And then on your next exhale, reach forward, out and down. When your spine is parallel-ish to the floor, your hand will come to a block underneath the right shoulder. If you need to step your back foot in, you step your back foot in a bit. Now from there, push down into both of your feet and hug them together. Lift your spine parallel to the floor and push down into your right hand. Now from here, start to scoop your belly on the left side and maybe rotate your left rib cage towards the sky as the right rib cage comes under. You might then isometrically pull back with the right hand and that allows the shoulder blades to engage. You might allow the right hip to come forward into the twist with you. And you might allow the left arm to float, but you're just listening and responding. What you do is based upon how your body's feeling. Yeah. Nice work. Very gently, if that left hand went up, lower the left hand back down, square your shoulders and chest to the floor. Bring both hands to your blocks. From here, shift your weight forward, walk your blocks forward, float your right leg parallel-ish to the floor. And you wanna make sure that right leg is super active, inner thighs lifted. Nice work. All right, as you're ready, bend the supporting leg, that's the left leg, step the right foot long and back, plant the palms and step back to a plank pose. You then either take a cat-cow cycle sequence or you cycle through an up dog or cobra. Yep. Nice job, guys. And then when you're ready, we'll all meet back in our downward facing dog for three breaths. And you just listen and respond and you breathe. Okay. Now this time, from your down dog, I want you to bend your knees and start to walk your feet to your face. Great. Once you find yourself in a forward fold, separate your feet about hip distance apart. 
Your hands might come to that blanket roll at the top of your space. They might come to the block. That's totally up to you. But I want you to find your halfway lift. So spine parallel-ish to the floor. Maybe hands are on blocks or on that blanket. Now, again, find that cow shape. So your belly dumps, your sit bones lift, and then lengthen out through your spine. Now, from here, start to bend your knees a lot. From there, draw your hands to heart center, bring your spine up, and now we're in Utkatasana chair pose. You might stay there, you might reach your arms forward, you might reach your arms up. But we're gonna breathe here for three. We're gonna breathe here for two. You're finding that cow shape in your back for one. Yeah, and then as you're ready, straighten the legs. Maybe stand up, look up, reach up. And then exhale, lower the hands down. Take a moment to soften the gaze and close the eyes and just notice that you've arrived. We're finally standing after all of that. And just notice what it feels like. What little movements might the body be calling for in this moment? And how do you give yourself permission to listen and respond? Yeah, all right. Last few things before we cool down. If the eyes are closed, go ahead and open the eyes. Some of you might put a block between your inner thighs. You might put it between your shins. You might not use a block at all. That's totally up to you. We're going to go ahead and sweep our arms up. Grab your left wrist with your right hand. Inhale, reach up. And then exit little baby side bend. So this is exactly what we did at the beginning, but we were on our backs. Now I want you to bend your inner left thigh back. Keep rooting into your left foot and let your right outer hip come forward. Yep, and you just pause and you breathe. Tailbone draws down. Next in breath, go ahead and come up to your center. And we'll do all that to the other side. Grab your right wrist. Inhale, reach up. And exhale over to the left. And again, you send your inner right thigh back. Your outer left hip forward. And you breathe. Yep. Some sauce. Go ahead and inhale, come up. Exhale, release the arms down. Go ahead and remove that block. And do one more thing. Hands will come to your hips. Bend your knees. Your left leg is going to cross behind you to the right. And you're going to come to the outside edge of your right foot. And then inhale, sweep up through your left arm. And as you exhale, you sort of push your pelvis over towards the left. And that gives you a different stretch. And then are we breathing? Yeah. And then inhale, gently come up. Hands to hips. Up the feet together on the other side. Okay, so bend your knees. Right leg comes behind you and to the right. You're on the pinky toe edge side of the foot. Inhale, sweep up through the right hand. And if you're really on your greater trochanters of your hips, it really feels like you're pushing your hips to the right as you're reaching out through the left. I mean, what happens if you slide your left hand down a little and then push your pelvis that way? Nothing. Does it feel better? Okay. <laughs> and then inhale, come up. Fantastic. And then from here, you're just going to separate your feet, probably a little outer hip distance apart. And you're going to pop a squat and sit in Malasana. And you're just going to let your head fall forward. See if you can keep your feet on the floor. If not, your blanket roll is there. You can slide it underneath your heels. And sometimes that feels good because it just gives you some support. And you just pause and you breathe. And you pause and you breathe. Yeah. Alrighty. From here, slowly bring your butt to the floor. Draw the soles of your feet together. And sit for a moment in Supta Baddha Konasana. You're just going to be here. If you want to be upright, you're upright. If your body says, I want to be forward, then you be forward. You're listening and responding to what feels appropriate to you. And you're just pausing and breathing for a few breaths. Pausing and breathing for a few breaths. Yeah. All right. We got two more breath cycles here. Gently, we're going to come out of the shape. So you might just push down into the floor to bring the spine up to vertical. Then bring your hands to the outside edges of the legs and close the knees together. This is going to be a weird twist that we haven't done in a while. It's called noose pose, ironically enough. But you're going to bring your left hand back behind you. Hold both your shins and see if you can scooch your feet closer to your butt or your butt closer to your feet. Whatever works for you. 
And I want you to inhale, push down into your back hand, lift up through your spine. And as you exhale, you'll pull your legs over to the right as you scoop the belly and roll your rib cage towards the left. And then you pause and you breathe and then you check in with your skull. Is your head careening forward or is it in alignment with your spine? Yeah. Yep. And then gently you're going to unwind that. And we'll go to the other side. So now your right hand comes back behind you. Your left arm is around. And sometimes it just feels nice to lift up the feet and draw them closer to your butt. Or you draw your butt closer to your feet. Whatever works. And then inhale, lift up. Exhale, pull with that left hand as you scoop the low belly on the right side and rotate the rib cage towards the right. And then notice where your head is in alignment or rather in relationship to the spine. Yep. And then you gently inhale and unwind that. Bring your hands alongside your hips, the palms face, well, fingertips face out. Separate your feet hip distance apart and you might need to walk your feet forward just a little bit from you. Great. And you're going to just push down through your hands, draw your chest towards your knees, hug your shoulder blades together on your back. And you might stay here and just be happy as a clam here. We'll breathe for three. You might move your head around for two. Keep the arms active for one. Some of you will stay right here. Some of you will bring your head back to center, push down through your hands, push down through your feet, and lift your hips up. Now you want to first see if you can lift your hips in line with your shoulders. So they have to come up a lot. And then you'll push wide through your hands. And notice that that gives you a different sensation in the arms and the shoulders. And then some of you will allow your head and your focus to go to the ceiling and maybe even back behind you. And then gently you'll lower down. And sit up nice and tall. Hold on to your shins and just be there for a moment. Yeah, awesome. And then let's go ahead and people in person, actually everybody, turn around and face the back of your space. And then we've got options. You might want that blanket roll nearby. Some of you will put the blanket roll underneath your knees and you'll take Supta Baddha Konasana to finish. Some of you will put that blanket roll underneath your spine, this time um, in alignment with your spine. So your spine will drape over the whole blanket roll. And then you'll lie yourself down on your back. So you choose what you want to do. It might feel nice to have the blanket supporting the whole spine. It might feel nice to have the blanket underneath the knees in Supta Baddha Konasana. You also have blocks if you wanted to use them. You should just take a moment to lie down. And then if the blanket is underneath your whole vertebral vertebra, the whole spine, you might let your arms open out. And you want to make sure that your butt is still on the floor as the spine is on the blanket. Cool. And we're just going to stay here for five to ten breaths. And you'll just check in and see how this feels to you. You're listening to what the body is telling you. And it might help if you just take a big breath in through the nose and an audible exhale out through the mouth. <sighs> just allowing yourself to settle in, to drop in. And as you're here for these last few breath cycles, if you choose to, you can stay right here for Shavasana. If something else feels like it might be more appropriate for you, You'll gently come off your blanket and you will make your way to your final resting pose. And then we'll just take a few breaths to fall into ourselves. And for today's Shavasana, we are going to allow we are going to allow a much more active Shavasana in the sense that I want you to start to tune into the sensations that you feel in this sense of stillness. And as you notice the sensations, can you breathe with and into them? 
And notice what that does. And so I'll leave you here with you for a few minutes. You're just noticing the sensation. You're breathing into and with them. And then you're just noticing what you notice. And when it's time to come out, I'll let you know. Return your awareness to your breath. As you come back to your breath, just take a moment to check in. If there's any part of you that's longing to linger in this shape, by all means, please 
stay here. When you are ready to move on, I invite you to listen to the ways that your body wishes to move. Let it be gentle and sweet. Those in stillness, stay as long as you'd like. Those in movement, you'll gently start to make your way to one of your sides. When you do find yourself on your side, take a few moments to just breathe there. Just listen to how the body responds the breath and this orientation to gravity. From there, you'll roll your chest gently more towards the floor and start to walk yourself up to a tall and gentle seat. When you are vertical, I do encourage you to sit up on a block or a blanket. And just take an opportunity to really listen to how the body feels like it needs to be oriented. So it feels like the vertebra is just each vertebra is stacked right on top of each other. And then we'll complete with a few rounds of Nadi Shodhana. So take both palms and allow them to face up. Tuck your left index finger into the, the nape of your left thumb. If you need inspiration today, let the palm stay up. If you need grounding, turn the left palm down. And from there, the right hand, tuck the index finger and middle finger towards the base of the thumb. Draw the right palm in front of your face. Rest the right thumb on the outside edge of the right nostril and then the ring finger and pinky finger outside the left nostril. Go ahead and sit up tall and then exhale all the breath from your mouth. Close your right nostril and draw the breath in just through the left. Top of your inhalation, close your left nostril and exhale out through your right. When you need to, draw the breath in through your right. Top of your inhalation, close your right and exhale out through your left. That counts as one round of Nadi Shodhana. You'll take three more on your own. I do encourage you to just listen to the length that the breath wants to be and try to follow that as fast as possible. Noticing how you can soften any unnecessary tension maybe in the neck in that right arm, in the face. And as best as possible, try to notice if you have any attachment to the breath being a certain length. And as best as you can, just notice that and allow it to like go to soften. After you've taken your fourth exhalation through your left nostril, you'll lower your right hand. And then allow yourself to just take a few natural breaths. And as best as possible, I'd like you to listen inward and notice if you can notice where they get their thoughts or feelings. Notice where they're coming from. 
Are the messages being sent from the brain down or are they be being sent from the heart, the organs up? One is not inherently better than the other. We need both. And I just invite you to notice at any time before you respond today, see if you've listened first. And notice if that response is the one you truly wish to give. We'll go ahead and complete our practice with a collective breath followed by a collective OM. Bring your hands to heart center, Anjali Mudra. Press the palms into each other. Receive the weight of the thumbs into your sternum and then lift your heart towards your hands. Lift up through the top of your ears to draw the chin back and then gently exhale all the breath from your mouth. Take a big breath in through the nose. Audible exhale. Inhale for Om. Join if you'd like. Draw your thumbs to your third eye. May our thoughts be clear. Draw your thumbs to your lips. May our words be kind. And draw your thumbs to your heart center. May our hearts be open. The light, the breath, and the listener within me honors and salutes the light, the breath, and the listeners within each of you. Namaste.